Okay. So. Okay. okay, so f of x and g of x are inverses of each other. Find g inverse or the derivative of g at one if blah 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 blah. Okay, so all right. Well, we know that f and g. So what? Let's just write out what we know. If they're inverses of each other, then we know that g of five equals three. Mm -hmm understand where i'm coming up with that yeah we know g g of negative four equals five yeah we know g, g of one equals negative four okay yeah. so those are the those are the um points you get yeah those are the points that you can flip the x and the y around and then they're telling us that Hmm. F inverse of G. What? Okay. Tell me what you know about the derivatives of inverses. What's a property that you have about the derivatives of inverses? Property. Did I forget? Property of. I just know inverses are when the X and Y are flipped. Right. And is there a is there something that we know? Something that happens when you have the uh, the um, when you're taking the inver uh, is there a property that relates to inverses derivatives? I'm asking you if there's a property before I look it up because I don't really, to be honest, remember. But there must be there must be a property of of inverses. You want me to just look it up? Yeah, because that's this is like the one question I got wrong on the. Unit three, one of the unit three tests. Okay. Like the um, case, they're either a non calc or a calculator. So, like, you have to be good at both because he won't tell you if it's a non calc or calculator. Calculator is always harder, usually, every single time. Inverse function theorem allows us to compute derivatives of inverse functions without using the limit definition. So that's the one that we want, um, I believe. Inverse function theorem. Yeah. The inverse function theorem. Okay, this is... Um, here's the theorem, the inverse function theorem, let f of x be a function that is both in, invertible and differentiable. The y be the inverse of f for all x satisfying this, the derivative is equal to one over the derivative of the inverse of it. Okay, I sure so right. that's that's the function. Do you remember seeing this? Maybe. I don't. Do you idea? Yeah, I. And also, you can also see that um, the derivative of g is equal to one over. Yeah, this is this is a good thing to for us to write down. So let me just pop this into the, into the into the uh thing yeah yeah hold on one second i'm trying to do this on my ipad here there you go okay, okay. i got the simpler one written down <laughs> okay good so this would be, let's see where it's at here. That's the rule that we're looking at. Okay. So they want us to find G inverse of one. So G inverse of one, let's use the property as would be right here is yeah. equal to F inverse of G of one. Yeah. So G inverse of one equals one over F inverse 
or I'm sorry, the derivative of f at g of one. So what is g inverse of one? Well, it's equal to one over f inverse of, and what's g of one? G of one. See how we already four. wrote it out? Yeah. yeah. So okay. it's f inverse of negative four. And what's f inverse of negative four? f inverse. We have okay. f negative four. Oh yeah, yeah f, f negative f inverse negative four is negative two. So one over. So it's one over one over negative two. There's your answer. That's easy. Yeah, Dang, that's I wish I knew this on the test. <laughs> Do you not remember seeing that? We got this problem on the test, but now I see why a person got a fraction for mm. this answer. It makes more sense now. And it was one over five was the answer. So it was clearly this formula. Mm -hmm. You don't remember seeing this in your notes, this formula? Maybe, I can't remember. It's so long ago now, it's been like two months. <laughs> yeah. I was seeing how All I right. did the unit four test to see if I was going to retake these mm. certain tests. Of a, but unit four, I didn't you even do that. It's just like every test just drops your grades slowly and slowly. Yeah, right. Do you have a do you have a um, another problem like that one that we can try? Um, I don't think so. That's the only one on this reassessment document. I can practice. I can practice. I can find another one or practice it when um. Don't worry. Okay. We it. yeah. We can come back and find some more to practice. Yeah. Let's try this one. All right. All these are going to be word problems from unit four because I want to master these word problems in case he makes that Got it. reassessment. Yeah. So this this problem, I'm on page or I'm on, on the second page. Yeah. On this document, they want us to find the derivative dy dx for this function. So this is implicit differentiation, right? Yeah. So what we're going to do is apply dy dx to this whole thing. Mm -hmm. And and we're going to have basically the chain rule that we use whenever we have a y. So if I take dy dx of this entire equation, basically. Yeah. So I'm taking the derivative of y with respect to x, which means y is a function of x. So we have to take the derivative of the outer function, which is 3y squared, right? Yeah. 3y squared, but then you have to multiply that by the derivative of the inner function, which is y. Yeah. So you get dy dx, right? Mm -hmm. And then I, if I do that to this next one, you get two I get plus two y mm -hmm. dy dx. Good. To it to the next one, I get what? Mm, just minus five dy dx. Yeah. Good. And what's the derivative of x squared? Two x. Good. So I don't need the dy dx there. And what's the derivative of negative four? Mm -hmm. And then you put the plus two X on the other side, and then you mm -hmm. dy dx factor the rest, and then you divide. You got it. That's exactly right. So dy dx, I factor a dy dx out, and it's three y squared plus two y minus five equals two X, and mm -hmm. then divide both sides by that. So dy dx equals two X over three y squared plus two y minus five. You know what I need to find out? Um, I need to find a, like the problem like that with the chain rule because I messed up the chain. I'm, I was still confused about the chain rule, to be honest, on um, implicit differentiation. Mm -hmm. What do you, I'm trying to think of one that was so, so the chain rule, basically, we did do the chain rule here for this problem, right? We, we basically took the, this is the chain rule because Y is a function of X. So we're taking the derivative of the outer function, which is Y cubed which is y two, three y squared. And then we're multiplying it by the derivative of the inner function, which is y. So that's what we're doing there. Yeah, so, I'm you know, thinking about it, like it, one of, Sorry, I'm just thinking about the ones that are like x, y, uh -huh. I guess you say, because I have an x and a y. Let me look for one. There's none in this reassessment document. Uh, I'm trying to think where I could let me that escape. All right, give me you a want, do you want? Yeah, okay. I'm trying to maybe figure out where this that could have been. May, uh, maybe look, let me look at the unit four review, maybe. 
That will probably have to be dead. Come on, load. Which I remember, oh, I'm trying to find the. Should I go back to one of our old jam boards? I remember doing it on it. Um. Yeah. You. What do you want? Just like a oh, general. I found it. I found it. I found it. I found it. Yeah. Yeah. This is an X and a Y combined. Okay. I found it. Yeah. Just tell me, and I'll write it. It's seven Y to the fourth power plus. X cubed Y plus X equals four. And find dy dx. Um. Yeah, it's like an implicit differentiation problem. Okay, so dy dx. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. So is gonna be so take the derivative of this first one and it's four y cubed, right? So mm -hmm. that'd be twenty eight y cubed dy dx. Yeah. Oh, it's X in, to the third power, by the way. Okay. The um, next part. So in, in this case, it's just the product rule, right? But it could have been a quotient. You could use the quotient rule, right? Or yeah. it could be any other, any other thing. But in this instance, we're going to use the product rule. So the, whoops, the uh, derivative of the first times the second, which is 3x squared times the second, which is y, yeah. plus... So I'm just going to kind of put a bracket around it so you see that I'm doing this one. Okay. Right. Plus, plus the derivative of the second, which is just dy dx times yeah. the first. So that was actually a little too easy. Can we make it more difficult? Let's pretend like this was squared. Okay. Let's pretend like the y was squared instead. That would be a little bit more complicated. Okay. So if the y was squared, then it would be this one would be y squared, and then this would be 2y dy dx times x cubed. Got it? Plus 1 equals 0. Okay. Plus 2y dx. Okay. Do you see what I did? Yes. Yeah, I see. So I, I, I'm doing the product rule. I'm taking the derivative of the fir this first one. It, this is the derivative of the first. Yeah. With respect to X times the second plus the derivative of the second with respect to X is going to be two Y dy dx. Yeah. Right. Times times the first. Yeah. Okay. And so then it's just that same deal. I don't really need these brackets now, right? These are unnecessary. I only yeah. put them there so you can see that I was taking the derivative of that one. Right. Yeah. But now you'd move everything that doesn't have a dy dx to the right. And everything that does have a dy dx, you leave it on the left and you factor it out. So that's 28y cubed plus 2yx cubed equals, and I'm subtracting these. So negative 3x squared y squared minus 1 is yeah. on the right. So dy dx just equals negative 3x squared y squared minus 1 all over 28y cubed plus 2yx cubed. Yeah. But not, not really much different. Yeah. It makes a lot more sense now. Six foot tall man. There's the man. Yeah. Walks at a rate of two feet per second. So um, distance. Um, so a rate is like your dx over dt. Yeah. Yeah is two feet per second toward a light that is 20 feet above the ground. So here's the light that's 20 feet above the ground. Yeah. So this is six. That's 20. When he is 10 feet from the base. So this is 10 right here. Mm -hmm. We'll call this zero. No, I'm sorry. We'll call this zero. He's 10 feet away. Yeah. When it's 10 feet from the base of the light, at what rate is the length of his shadow moving? Okay, so his shadow is going to be, here's what his shadow does. Let's draw the picture so we can understand. That's the shadow length. Okay. Got it? Yeah. So this is a right angle. 
this is six feet. This distance here is six feet. This distance here is 20 feet. So we have similar triangles. Yeah. And so they're asking when he's six feet away at what rate, or when he's 10 feet away, at what rate is the length of his shadow moving? So let's come up with relationships between these different variables. So um, you know what, it might be. That's right, we'll call them. What's that? Is it related rate rates, I yeah, guess? These, like, yeah, yeah. This, related rates. this is related rate. So I'm gonna actually draw the picture over here so it's a little bit easier. Okay. I'm gonna have him walking from the left or from the right to the left. Yeah. And the reason is because then I'm not we're not messing with this is zero, and I want to know when he's 10 feet away. Mm -hmm. So he's walking toward it. So it's, it just it kind of makes a little bit more sense. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I'm looking for the rate that this, this, this right here, we'll call this, let's call that X, that distance X. And we'll call hold on a second. Okay. The problem is that 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 number right there, he's as he's walking this way, mm -hmm. it, the point isn't going to be fixed right here. Yeah. As he's walking, that that shadow is going to be, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. When he gets to here, that's going to be like here. So I have to be careful what I'm calling, what I'm calling what. Yeah. Okay. Any any ideas on how to do this? Let me draw write out the numbers. I remember for like for like it was called cone problems. You would like get a radius and a height and you would like match them as fractions like as like fractions together and then you proportion, would proportion right. Proportions, yeah. right. Yeah. So the proportions are but what am I going to call them is what I'm trying I'm trying to relate this distance Here's what I'm trying to do in my head. I'm trying to see how this total distance right here is related to, like, what am I going to call that distance? Because um, I can't call them both X. I'll call this. Or can I, can I break it up? Do I break it up like this where I have That's X. I think it's something completely different. The DX DT is two feet per second, right? Right. But that's what I'm trying. I call it a DX DT, but I have to make sure that I have X. The mm -hmm. X is correct. So the, this shouldn't be X right here. This should be X right here because he's moving this way. Yeah. The change in X per time. Um, so I need to find a relationship between them. Um, 10 feet from the base of the light at what rate is the length of the shadow moving? So, well, let's just call them, let's just call them, I don't know, let's just, here, let me, let me just call these X and Y and see if that helps. I'm going to call this full distance right here. Mm -hmm. x and i'm going to call this distance right here y so we know that 20 is to x as 6 is to y yeah that's the relationship we know because these are um uh, similar triangles yeah right so they're proportionate yeah um but we want to find out uh, we have to find another equation that relates X and Y together. So we, we just like, you can do like six, you can like divide Y or, to, or I mean, multiply Y or X on one of the other sides, right? Is that what you do? 
I think like you get like yeah. Well, what we want though, what we want is to figure out how X and Y are related to each other. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. How are how are these two values related to each other? Um, just height and I don't even know. Well, let's see. Sorry, I'm I'm trying to think about. Yeah, I I know these problems are really hard. I understand. Yeah, these are kind of tricky. I don't I don't do these very often. Um, let's see. Um, we can say. The thing that sucks is for these documents, there's no answers. It's like it's like a reassessment document. They don't like. I don't even know. They just don't have answers for them. So it's hard. Yeah. So let's let's do this since we got time. Since it's just me and you, I'm gonna look up related rate shadow problem, and it'll probably related rate shadow problem classic. All right, can you see my screen okay? When yeah. your BFF needs your notes ASAP, can you hear get a clean no? copy with the Google yeah. app for iPhone. Just oh, good. In this lesson, we're going to focus on the oh, shadow problem. It's just like in one change of... So we have... Just 21 instead of... If you draw 20. the large triangle, right? it has the angle theta. And the so small he's... triangle has the same angle theta. And both triangles are right triangles. So we are using theta. Okay. Now, according to Sokotoa, hopefully you know your trick. Tangent theta of the first triangle, that is this one, so it's equal to the opposite side, which is 21. So he's using, that's the so other thing that's point, relating them together. We need to yeah. plug in what we have. So this is going to be 6x plus 6s. Okay, so what did he do? 21. So he is, yeah, he's splitting them up. The total length, which which I called X, mm -hmm. he's calling just the length between the man and the light pole X. Yeah. So that's what I was thinking. X, so it, so it would be X plus the shadow calling it S. Yeah. So, so he that's what he's doing. Okay, and then he's going to create... Next week. So now at this point, we need to plug in what we have. XCT. <clears throat> so you see what? You see what he's doing there? Yeah. He is the XCT. Now is he calling that positive? Which way is he walking away? Seems like it. Yeah. He's a walking away from the street light. So we want him to be walking. Okay, that's going to be one of the things we have to we have to consider because he's what he's actually what well, the way we have it drawn. He's actually walking toward the street light. Yeah. Let's see what is our second man walks at a rate of, toward a light that is. Okay, so his rate is actually negative two feet per second. So we're going to try this. We're going to do it like this. We're going to call this y or at, we're going to call that s for shadow length mm -hmm. and we'll call that distance x yeah and so really what we have is um 20 over x plus s equals 6 over s so 20 s equals 6 x plus s and then we're taking, like he did the derivative, whoops, he did the derivative with respect to, where did that go? He's, he's taking the derivative with respect to time, d, right? And yeah. so that's d, ds dt, 
So that's the length of the shadow. That's the FTT. And we know what DXDT is. There we go. And then I think, let's find out what he does next. I think he's going to bring into it theta. So now at this point, we need to plug in what we have. Our goal is to calculate DSDT, but it would be negative 3 feet per second. So now that we have DXDT, we could plug it into this equation. So we have 15 DSDT, that's equal to 6 times 3. Now let's divide both sides by 15. So DSDT is 6 times 3, and 15 is 5 times 3. I like so how he's doing that. That's three. how I like to do it, too. Yeah. Now, this gives us the final answer for part A. DSDT is going to be 6 over 5 feet per second. So that's the rate at which the length of the shadow is changing. Every Makes second... Sense. So he plugged in, okay. So um, if we simplify this, we're gonna get um, six X and I'm subtracting it, it's gonna be 14 S on the left, right? Mm -hmm. So if I take the derivative with respect to time, I would get 14 DS DT equals six DX DT. When he is 10 feet from the base of the light, at what rate? So I wonder if it doesn't matter where he's at, because I don't see how that would matter that he was 10 feet from the base. DX, DT, he's walking at a rate of 2 feet per second toward the light. So if he's walking this way, this way I'm going to have to call that negative 2 feet. So DX, DT. I believe in ours, it would be a negative two yeah. feet per second, right? Mm -hmm. So 14 DS DT equals six times negative two. So negative 12. D, so DS DT equals negative 12 over 14. Which is negative six sevens yeah. feet per second. Feet per second. Yes. Is that the right answer? I don't know. Do you know. It doesn't give you answers on this one. It's annoying. That's got to be right, though. I don't know how else it wouldn't be. Well, I don't know. Let's see. Let's... The concern I have is we never factored in the 10. You know? Yeah. He so, didn't... like he says right here, oh. what rate is the length of the shadow changing when he's eight feet from the light? It changes by 6 over 5 feet, or 1.2 feet. Now, let's move on to Part B. So in Part B, it's talking At about when he's 10 feet from the light. Is the tip of his shadow moving when he is 10 feet from the light? Oh, at what rate is the tip so this time we of his shadow DLDT. moving? How can we do that? We were talking First, about the length. Were we talking about the length of the shadow or the tip of the shadow? What rate is the length of his shadow moving? Yeah, we were talking about the length, not the tip of his shadow. Stuff. Can we just see what he does, though? Yeah, let's see what he does, because I'm now I'm interested in this. Now, let's start with this equation, which we had earlier. 21 divided by x plus s is equal to 6 over s, <laughs> using similar triangles. Now, instead of using x plus s, we're going to replace that with l, because notice that x plus s is equal to l. What well, rate is the tip of his shadow so moving? we have this expression. So that's the, the tip l of his shadow is... Is 6 divided by s. L is, is where l let's is. Let's cross multiply. So we have 21s is equal to 6 times l. And now, in this form... Let's differentiate both sides with respect to time. So the derivative of 21s is going to be 21 times dsdt. 
and the derivative of 6L is going to be 6 times dl dt. No, we don't now, know we have dl dt already, so we can plug it in to this expression. So what we have now is 20. Oh, so do you see what's happening? Yeah. He, he calculated ds dt, and that, that actually doesn't change based upon where he is. So it didn't actually matter. The length of the shadow did not change based upon where he was, or the, sorry, the, the rate of change of the shadow was, didn't, didn't depend on the point that he was. Yeah. Which, man, I'm not really sure I believe that. Let me see if I can go backward and find what I celebrate the holidays Hold with on. big savings Hold find on. great deals on the Amazon Echo Show 8 get up to 40% off outerwear and cuddle duds <laughs> what's that hey this is Cam with Black Tail okay. Studio and this week we are going to build the dining Let's table stop this. fix a busted corner I'm on my new pretty uh, cool photographs new iPad and, and last but not least we are going to show you how to clean up a it's hard for me it's hard for me to use it I'm not used to it yet all right related rate shadow problem here we go let's see if we have a different one Khan Academy Khan, Khan definitely does it right all the time, and he explains it sometimes a little bit more thoroughly. Let's find out. Sorry, I'm not helping you out yet, Khan. You're already a millionaire. Okay, can't hear it. This right over here is, this right over here is a mouse. And it's diving straight moving so let's think about what we know and what we don't know and to do that let's set up some variables so let me draw the Where's same the thing a little bit more geometric triangle in green is a similar triangle to the larger triangle is a similar triangle to this larger triangle that i am tracing in blue it's similar to this larger one how do i know that well, they both so have a right the, angle this is the right, right over here. Owl. They both share this angle. So Slightly all three, different. if they have two angles in common, then all three angles, all three angles, all three angles must be in common. So they are similar triangles, which means the ratio between corresponding sides must be the same. So we know that the ratio of x to y, the ratio to time. Forward. So the derivative of 20 times something with respect to time is going to be the derivative of 20 times something with respect to the something, which is just 20. That's the derivative of 20x with respect to x, times dx, the derivative of x with respect to t, is equal to, now over here, we're going to have to break out a little bit of the product rule. So he's doing that same thing we were talking about. Yeah. But his is, he's actually doing it differently. He's going. Or no, maybe he's not, because he's saying why. I can't. I don't see what the question said. Do you see what the question was? No, I didn't. It looks like yeah. it's a twenty and fifteen instead of a. 20. It's something about an owl. It's something about how how an owl like it's going to catch a mouse. Yeah. And what and the the speed of the shadow or the the rate of change of like the shadow of the owl, which is the the owl shadow is in blue over there to the right. Yeah. The owls in blue. So it's he probably said something when he's 15 feet off the ground. How I don't even know what he said. Yeah. All right, that's probably not going to help us. Thanks for nothing, Con. And I lost the jam board. Oh, there it is. Related rate shadow problem. Maybe Steve Crow can help us. Man walking. Let's try this one. Hi, first, I'm Nicole Hockley from Sandy Hook Promise. I know this is hard to hear, but. In this problem, we have a man standing near a lamppost. Yeah, so this is like the other one. And it's shining down just... on him, creating a shadow. Right. And the man walks away from the lamp at five feet per second, so he's, oh, he's moving the in the lane. direction of the arrow. Yeah. And we're asked to find the, the rate at which the tip of his shadow is changing. So the rate is on it as a triangle. Now let's, let's get y to equal something in x. So we yeah, subtract so the 6y from both sides, way. we get 9y 
9y equals 6x, and y equals 2 thirds x. So he's writing y in terms okay, of Okay, great. X. We solved for y in terms of x. So we eliminated one, one variable. I'm just going to leave it there for now. You'll, you'll see why in, later. So y equals 2 thirds x. Perfect. So this was step one. Step one was figuring out this proportional triangle and solving for y in terms of x to eliminate a variable. Okay. Okay, step two, how are we going to figure out how, wh what, what relationship will tell us how fast that point is moving? Well, we could figure it out because it's the, it's the rate at which L is changing, right? The total length, if this extends, then L extends. So the rate at which this tip is moving is the same as the, which the, as the, same as the rate in which L is moving. So that makes sense. let's write yeah. that out. So L. Now there are two questions are flipped. And now we have an equation that relates flipped from what we L and before. X. And that's what we want because we know dx dt. We're trying to find dl dt. So L equals X plus Y, which is just X plus two thirds X. Okay, so this is what he's doing. He's writing. So we needed. That's why he was eliminating this Y to make this substitution. Yeah. That that okay. This makes more okay. sense to me. So L equals this five is the way I would have done it, not the way the other guy did it. So I'm wondering if this is the Once same. We do that addition, and now dl dt, the derivative. So that'll be step three. Taking the derivative, the derivative, the rate at which L changes is equal to five thirds times the rate at which x changes, dx dt. And we already know that dx dt changes at 5 feet per second. So this is just 5 thirds times 5, which is equal to 25 thirds. So that's the, that's the tip of the shadow. OK, yeah. 25 thirds feet per second. So not too difficult. I feel like that that is the, I think that one's the correct answer. I almost wonder if the first one we watched did it correctly. Was it yeah. the exact same problem? I don't know if that, that I'll have to think about it. If I mean, did it, it, it wasn't would... terribly easy. We had to set up this proportion. Right, and let's do the and first part. The now. hardest part. In... Okay. So let's look at the next question. The rate at which the length of his shadow is changing. Well, that's going to be what? Looking at this diagram, what is that going to be? The length of his shadow is y. So the rate at which his shadow changes is dy dt. So now let's let's go back. They're gonna have let's to go back to this step where we said y equals two thirds x. Now let's say x. Let's solve for x. X equals what? Three halves y. And now let's let's go back. So we have l. L equals y plus 3 halves y. So we made a different substitution now. We took x out. We had y plus x, but x is just 2 thirds y. Okay. And we can, this will yeah. become equal to. This makes more sense. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. 5 halves y. You find a relationship. Yeah is equal to L. And now when we take the derivative, we already know what dl dt is. We figured it out in the last problem. Or in, in part A. And maybe I should have written the answer so you could see it, but part A was 25 thirds. Okay, so dl dt, that's just 25 thirds. That's what we figured out in the last problem. is equal to 5 halves dy dt. And dy dt is the rate at which its shadow changes. That's what we're after. So we can just do this. Um, Hold on. 25 this, thirds wasn't L. Uh, division was just divide by 2 fifths, which is the same as, or, or, or sorry, oh, 5, took, five yeah. halves, which is the same as multiplying by 2 fifths. And this will come out to be equal to 
10 thirds. 10 thirds feet per second. Okay, so we found our two answers. Okay, hold on a second. So the difference with this problem is that they didn't ask at what point, like find the rate of change at a given point. Yeah. Which, um, I don't know that, actually, I don't know that it would have mattered, but for this particular problem, I don't know if the point at which it happens makes that, it makes a difference. Like yeah. is his shadow, is the, is the shadow, the rate at which the length of the shadow changing, does it depend on how far away he is? Kind of feel like it does, but this isn't taking that in consideration. Yeah. And really the other one didn't either. The other one didn't ever plug in that number. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You see the problem that I'm having with all of these problems, but this one, the way that he did this, see, what they, it makes, I mean, it's the more the way I would have done it, but I wonder if, so the other guys, the other guy would have just taken the nine Y equals six X up there and, yeah. and he just differentiated it right away. Yeah. To find DY DT, he just took the derivative. So let's see if that would have worked. Nine DY DT equals six dx dt and dx dt is five so five times six is 30 what's 30 divided by nine it's not 10 thirds is it 30 divided by nine is three it is it's 10 thirds yeah. it's the same thing yeah so actually that other way did work you didn't have to do all of that yeah Huh. Well, now I'm kind of confused on the best way to do this one. So negative six sevenths feet per second is probably correct because it is going to be getting smaller. So DSDT should be negative. So I believe that's right. But, but again, why does 10, the, 10, the confusing part is this piece of information was not needed. Yeah. And you don't have the answer key for this. No, unfortunately, I don't. Okay, let's see if there's one more. Let's. We didn't watch one of these, did we? It was the I'm last. One. To... No, did we already watch that one? When your BFF needs your notes ASAP, you get a this clean copy with watching. the Google app for iPhone. This is what we we're just watching. All right, what's going on? No, no, let's take a look at a related rate problem. It it's says different. a street light is mounted at the top of a fifteen foot tall pole a man one. six feet tall walks away from the pole with a speed of That's five feet guy, per though. second along a straight path can you hear him? how fast is the tip of his shadow moving yeah. when yeah. he is 40 feet here we want to know how fast they they tell us that he's walking at five feet per second so that's the change in X. That's how fast he's, so this, this distance here is 40, changing. 40 feet from the so pole. we know that yeah. DX DT is equal to five feet per second. Now, what do Let's they want us to find? 40. Well, how plus Y? Uh, his, his well, voice what would that high. be? Barely that would be dx dt, because remember, we're taking the derivative with respect to t, plus this side, so this big side here, x plus y, over what? He's, he's writing it over in a different this way, side. The yeah. proportion, but don't let it confuse y. you. It's the same See, thing. I did the, I did this big triangle. I know what y is, so I can take this and plug it in there for y. Yeah, he's doing it All that right, way. So let's let's do that. All right. So I've got the the derivative of x plus y. He's doing it a little in a with little bit of a different way. With respect to t, is equal to the derivative of x plus. Now, in the place of y, I'm going to put two thirds x. With respect to t. All right. So now 
let's Again, combine like these. Never, so that's going to be the 40. derivative of, they and that's going to be uh, x plus two pole. thirds x. That's going to be five thirds x with respect to t. All right. So now, if I take the derivative, that's going to be what? Five thirds derivative. Of five thirds x is just five thirds times dx dt. And now all I have to do, well, the only thing I have here to plug in is dx dt. And I know what that is. That's five feet per second. So this, and it had nothing so to do with 40. that's going to give me yeah. five thirds <laughs> times five, which is 25 over three. And that's feet per second. And that's how fast the tip of the shadow is uh, moving. All right, so I hope the video helped. So that Check out my other videos. Give me a like, share, and subscribe. And thanks for watching. That did not, that does not have anything to do with that piece of information, is what yeah. it sounds like. Yeah. Hmm. Rip. <laughs> Here's another one. Is this is this the same one we have? Where you have? It was two feet per minute, right? Okay, and we're walking toward. They're walking away. Yeah. Okay, so this is thirty feet from the lamppost, but these are at least our notes. So let's just read the notes. Maybe this is better. So yeah, okay. So we've got the idea. Oh, are they not going to show me the answer? Here we go. So. They said, how fast is the shadow growing when the person is 30 feet from, from the lamppost? See, for this one, yeah, never. Oh, well, yeah, here we go. X equals 30. DX DT equals 5. But did they ever plug in 30 anywhere? They never did. Five. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Five feet per second was plugged in, but you never had to plug because um, because there were no squares in it. That's the reason that you didn't have to do that. So it, it doesn't matter, right? Because if there was a squared in it somewhere, like 6x squared, then you'd still have an x left over. Yeah. I like this page. We're going to have to come back to this one. Let's see if there's some other related rate problems. What was the other one that we had? No, these are more simple. The first one that we were kind of stumped on. All right. Well, regardless, we've we've we I think we've answered that. This is a little bit of a fooler. It doesn't matter that it says 10 feet from the base. That actually doesn't make have any impact because yeah. you never have to plug in x equals 10. Yeah. Okay. So let's try this one. A spherical balloon is inflated with gas at a rate of 800 cubic centimeters per minute per minute how fast is the radius of the balloon increasing at the instant the radius is so here's when the radius equals 30 centimeters okay so a balloon so what's the um volume of a sphere what's the formula for the volume of a sphere do you remember off the top of your head four thirds pi r squared cubed i believe I was pretty close. Does that sound right? I, I think it's that four thirds pi r cubed. Right, let's just search it up just in case. Yeah, you. All right. So I'm going to ask Siri. Hey, Siri, what's the volume of a sphere? A sphere is a geometrical object in three dimensional space. Yeah, and I know. The Give me the form. Okay, that didn't work. Series being trash. Not only did that not work, but now my 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 headphones are connected to my phone instead of my iPad. So I'll give it a sec. Let's see if it comes back to me. You want me to search it up? Yeah, go ahead and search it up. I'm pretty sure that's the right thing, though. What I just told you.
Yeah, it's four thirds pi r cubed. Okay. I can probably four call third. it a problem, uh, by the way, because then um, this is like one that it's like related to the cone problem. So it's help because it's like a different formula. So I just need to understand what they do with the formulas and stuff. Yeah. So it says, um, how fast is the radius of the balloon increasing at the instant? So this, yeah, this is more straightforward. So they're saying, how fast is the radius? So they want to know dr dt. That's what they're trying to find. Yeah. So dv dt. Uh, here, this right here is dv dt. Yeah. 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 Got it. So we yeah. take the derivative of both sides. So dv dt equals 4 pi r squared dr dt. Yeah. yeah th this is the kind. This is what I was looking for when I was confused by that other one. Um, right. Yeah. But, wait. But wait. How do you get 4 we, and pi r squared? Like the because I took, I took the derivative here. So I multiply the 3 down and I reduce it by 1 and the 3 cancels. You multiply had, by three. I had I had three over three. Okay. So the threes canceled. That's what that I did. On the last, I was like, that was like my last hill thing. I was so confused what to do. And I got I did that. Okay, good. So all I'm doing is all I'm doing is what we we're just talking about. I'm doing the um the chain rule. Yeah. I'm taking the derivative of this, which is three r squared, and then multiplying it by dr dt. But I also just canceled the three and with the three on the bottom is what I was doing. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So now dv dt is 800. Yeah. Four pi r, they're saying at the instant when r is 30. So I plug in 30 and dr dt. Yeah. So that's your answer. So the dr dt uh, is just. Whatever, ever. I'll do that real quick. Yeah, it's just 900. Three squared is 900, right? Okay. Then times four. Four pi 30 squared. You know, Oops, sorry, that's, that should be on the bottom, not on the top. 800's on the top. And you got four pi. I got 14.13. Let's see if you're right. 800 divided by, and I'm going to use parentheses. Four, wait. Pi, I, think it's the opposite. I think four pi 30, thirty r squared. Thirty squared is divided by eight hundred. I think it's you're gonna need a fraction out of that. Yeah, and it, and it should be a fraction. Look at the problem again. Look at what what am I gonna what am I dividing for? Eight hundred is by itself. I'm trying to get dr dt by itself. So I divide. Oh, 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 oh my God. Yeah, you're right. You're right. So that Stop. equals 0. Oh. 0. 0.07 cubic centimeters per minute. Okay. Okay. That makes more sense now. My bad on that. Yeah, no, that's okay. I almost did the same thing, actually. When I first started, I almost did that exact same thing. And let's just make sure, let's make sure that's right. Let me go second enter because the, these calculators sometimes are a little bit goofy. I'm going to insert a parentheses and I'm going to do 30 squared. Yeah, I wanted to make sure it was not squaring the whole thing, which I, I wouldn't think it would have done because the order of operations. Yeah. All right, that was more straightforward, I feel. Yeah. All right, here, here we go. Here's another one. A ladder 25 feet long. So let me just go back and make a point that I was trying to make before that I was thinking about before. The reason that this was unnecessary right here is because of the way the, the formulas work. In this case, there's no, when we took the derivative of this, there was no X left over. Yeah. Yeah. Right. There was no there was no X because it was linear. These were linear, not not cubic like the last one was or even quadratic. If you have a quadratic one, you're going to have when you take the derivative of quadratic is linear. 
right? So you still have an X, but yeah. the derivative of a linear is a constant. It's a constant function, right? So then the fact that this X didn't matter in this case, it doesn't matter where they are, the rate of change. So they didn't have to say when he's 10 feet from the base, what is the length of the shadow? They could have just said, or what is the rate of, what rate is the length of the shadow moving? They could just say, what rate is the length of the shadow moving at all times? Because that, yeah. that length is constant. Yeah. Does that make sense? But that was a little bit of a tricky, tricky point. And none of those videos that we watched pointed that out. They never, none of them pointed out the fact that you weren't plugging, that there was a fuller piece of information in that question. Yeah. Okay. Let's try this one. A ladder 25 feet long is leaning against the wall of a house. There we go. This is more classic, classic problem. So here's the wall of a house. This is a 25 foot ladder. So that's 25. The base of the ladder is pulled away at a rate of, so the base, here's the base, is pulled away at a rate of two feet per second. So let's call this X. So DX DT equals two feet per second. Got it? Yeah. So this is Y up here. How fast is the top of the ladder moving down the wall when the base is seven feet from the wall? So they're asking what's DY DT, right? How fast is the ladder moving down? They're asking for DY DT. Mm -hmm. um, when its base is seven feet, when um, y equals seven, that's what they're asking. And then when y equals 15, and then when y equals 24, they're asking for those two things. So we have to come up with a relationship between x and y and 25. And that, of course, is x squared plus y squared equals 25 squared, right? Yeah. And now we take the derivative. We take with respect to time. So 2x dx dt plus 2y dy dt equals zero. And now what we have to do is we have to find out what you could do is you could find out how x and y are related to each other and salt and like plug one in for the other, or you can just calculate what the x's and the y's would be at each one of these points you understand what i'm saying yeah so we know that d we know that dx dt is always two feet per second a positive two feet per second yeah. so this is always this is two and in the first instance when y equals seven so i'm going to do that one first when y equals seven um x equals do your solution like solve it Mm -hmm. x squared plus 7 squared equals 625. So x equals the square root of 625 minus 49. You see how I'm doing this? Yeah. 576, square root of 576. So you could just plug in that. You could plug in 2 square root of 576, right? Plus yeah. two, y was what? Seven. Wow. Yeah. And we're and we're solving for dy dt. Yeah. Now another thing you could do is you could, like I like he was doing in the video, you could actually solve this equation mm -hmm. for, um, for, uh, for x. Yeah, solve it for x. So x equals the square root of 625 minus y squared. And then you can plug that. This is what this is what they were doing if you just want to do it kind of. And I'll show you how you can use your calculator nicely to do this. You can do, and now what you can do is um, solve for dy dt. So you could literally take this equation and just say like um, 
and that way you're just plugging in one thing i don't know if that makes if that makes sense yeah. you're only worrying about plugging in one thing so you know that dy dx dt is two so you've got this is two and so you've got dy dt which is what we're trying to solve for here is yeah. equal to four times the square root of 625 minus y squared that's on the top all over 2y because you're dividing by 2y so actually i could cancel those and that would just be two yeah and then all you have to do is just literally plug in 7 15 and 24 yeah for each one of those you get what i'm saying and yeah. that might be an easier way to do it do you know that shortcut with your calculator how to do that have i ever showed you that trick before or do you remember the trick I do not remember. If you if you type in seven, you see the store button above the question mark. Store, if, yeah. If you store that for, we'll just call it X, even though it's Y, doesn't matter. So I'm storing seven for Y, and then I'm punching oh. in that formula: two times the square root of two times the square root of what was it? Six twenty-five minus. Yeah. It's going to be called X squared now, right? Yeah because I'm calling it X, all divided by X, all divided by X. If you just type in, if you hit enter now, it plugs seven in there for you. How, that does make sense, but how is that any faster, I guess? Well, 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 well I, didn't I didn't divide it by X. I'll show you how it's faster. Um, this should be divided by X, not times X. Yeah. 6.86. So this is six. This is 6.86. DY DT mm -hmm. is 6.86. Okay. So here's how it's faster because now all I have to do is change my Y to 15. So now I'm going to earn my X. I'm going to hit 15 store X enter. And now I hit second enter, second enter, and it toggles me back to that formula. And oh. now I hit enter and it plugs 15 in instead of seven. Oh. 2.6, right? Do you get what I'm saying? That's cool. How do they even do yeah. that? That's cool. Two and two. So that's just two and two thirds, right? 2.6 yeah. repeating. Yeah. And then for the last one, 24, just hit 24 store X, store X. And second enter, second enter, toggling it back, and now it's going to plug twenty four in there. That's Point cool that it's That's really cool. Yeah, I just realize how much coding goes into a to a calculator. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot it's in there. Probably. Okay, so see, so you see how you can do that, and why yeah. you might want to do it like that. That yeah. that's just a little bit quicker. Yeah. All right, part B says, consider the triangle formed by the sides of the house, the ladder on the ground. Find the rate at which the area of the triangle is changing when the base of the ladder is seven feet from the wall. All right, so now I'm going to just um, duplicate this. So that I can do this over again. So the rate at which the area is changing. So now let's find out an area formula. What's the area of a triangle equal to? Area half BH. Base, one half base, which is what? X. Yeah. Times I, height, which is what? Y. Y. Good. So when I try to find D, so now if I take the derivative of this, mm -hmm. D A D T, so that's what we're trying to find, right? Yeah. We're trying to find the rate at which the area is changing. We want D A D T. So DA DT equals, now I have to use the, uh, well, I could do it a couple ways. I could, I could just solve for one of them like I did over here already. Yeah. In fact, that's probably the better thing to do when the ladder is seven feet from the wall. So that's Y equals seven. So I could actually plug in if I wanted to. There's a couple ways you can do this. You could plug this thing, not that, this right here. Mm -hmm. You can plug that in for X so that your equation is only written in terms of Y. Yeah. And then when you're taking the derivative, you're only dealing with that. 
Yeah. Or you could do the product rule. Let's try the product rule, see if that's easier. So one half dx dt y plus one half dy dy dtx. Yeah. All right. So now we have to find out when it's seven feet from the wall, we have to find out what dy d so seven is y right yeah. y is seven x is we already know that's going to be square root of 625 minus 49 that's what x is going to be yeah you understand yeah you get what i'm you get what i'm doing there what was that number i can't remember well, i'll just i'll just try it 625 minus 49 yeah and then dy dt we know that was 2.6 repeating because I'm, I'm sorry. No, we don't. That was 6.86. Yeah. I'm pulling that from up above. Do you see where? Uh -huh. And then we, of course, have one half in front of that. Plus, what was DX DT? DX DT. Wasn't, wasn't that always two? Oh, uh, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got to be two. DX DT is two. And so DA. Away. Okay. Oh, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Is the latter, is the DY DT negative though? I don't, I think it was on the test with this certain problem. It, it was. It, it is, it is negative. But here's why we didn't write negative for part A. I'm actually now wondering why it didn't come out as negative when we punched it in. Yeah. Did we do something wrong when we punched it in? Because, but the reason I think you would write it as positive is because it says how fast is the ladder moving down? It's saying how fast is it moving down? So they just want the speed, which is a positive number. But because it's moving down, when I write it in here, I should write a negative in there. Yeah, but I'm a little concerned that it didn't come up, that it didn't, it wasn't negative when I was doing these formulas here. Yeah, wouldn't have turned it, wouldn't it have given me a negative number? I, I really don't know. Let's think about this. Shouldn't this have been? Should have been a negative because if this plus this is going to be zero, dy dt was a positive number. I'm sorry, dx dt was a positive number. So wouldn't one of these have to be a negative number? Wouldn't dy dt have to be a negative number in order for that to equal zero? I don't think dy dt changes much. Not like... Well, no, dy dt, look at, look, when, when y equals seven, Y equals 24. How fast? When base is seven feet from the wall, 25 feet from the wall. Um, something doesn't make sense with this answer. How fast is the top of the ladder moving down the wall? Okay, now I feel like we didn't do this right. Because how, when is it going to be moving faster? At the start of it falling or at the end of it falling? End of it, I think. Yeah, at the end of it, it should be moving faster. But our formulas here, it was getting, the, the change in Y with respect to time was getting... You know what I'm saying? The speed yeah. was getting slower. Also, another problem I have is that these numbers, should, one of this should be a negative number. Yeah. Why did I not have a negative number? I think when I punched it into. I think two maybe always stays negative in this. Actually, wait, no, but you said it's positive. In this was my form my formula that I punched in must have been, I must not have had a negative in there and I should have, maybe. 
let's let's start this over again. This should be negative four times the square. I'm looking at this formula right here, and I'm yeah. solving for dy dt. Okay, yeah. so it should be negative four times the square root of five seventy six. Okay, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to divide that whole thing by fourteen. Yeah. Okay, so that's why it should be an it, yeah, the the answer should have been a negative because it's going down. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But um we called we didn't call it a negative because it just said how fast is it moving down. It already said moving down. So I guess you can maybe write negative 6.85. I'm not really or 6.86. I'm not sure if you should write the negative in there or not. Yeah. But technically, it's going down, so it's a negative number. Yeah. Feet, feet per second. Okay. But then, if we if we plug in the other one. Okay. So what did I do wrong? Did I not subtract it correctly? Oh, I didn't put a negative here. That's what I did wrong. I didn't. I didn't put a negative in that formula that I was using in my calculator. That should have been a negative four because I'm subtracting it. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay, so, well, that makes me feel a little bit better, but I'm still confused why the speed is getting slower as Y gets bigger. Shouldn't the speed be getting so what's wrong with their formula that's not working the way that I think it should be working? I don't even, shoot. Sorry. Do you, do, you under, do you understand my dilemma here? Yes, I do. Isn't dy d isn't dy dt really just the speed? dy dt, it's the speed. How fast is the top of the ladder moving down when it is seven feet and the base is seven feet. So when X is seven feet, when X is 15 feet, when X is 24 feet, am I plugging in the wrong, I'm plugging in the wrong ones. I'm plugging in Y equals seven. It's X equals seven. I'm an idiot. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Dwight. Can see what we, I, yeah. Get, can we get going fast? Cause I have to be somewhere at 415. So. Oh yeah, sure. But do you see what I did? I did those problems wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Those are supposed to be X. So this formula is wrong. I should be solving for, um, I should be, um, yeah. These problems, these problems are wrong, but I'm trying to think how I can fix them. DY DT equals, um, yeah, we did those problems wrong. Okay. So what can I what can I do to fix it? Is what I'm looking for. Um, the formula still, if I wrote y equals, it would be really the same formula. It would be the square root of six twenty five minus x squared. But now, oh, but now my dy dt would look different, I believe. Because I'm plugging that in for my Y. So my formula should be, here we go. It should be negative four um, X over two, there we go, times the square root of uh, 625 minus X squared. That, there we go. That Now, now this is going to work. So cancel those, it becomes two. So those are what we should have plugged them into, which I believe might just be the, no, it's not quite the reciprocal of what we had before, but those are all what I should, it should be negative two X over, got it? So it yeah. should be negative two. So let's, let's store seven for X. And it should be negative two X divided by, the square, um, 
the square root of 625 minus x squared, the square root of 625 minus x squared. There we go, negative 5.83. Yep, I think maybe they're just gonna be flipped. So this is negative 5.83. I don't know why that happened to be flipped. But now if I store um, 15 for X, mm -hmm. so 15 store X, do you understand what I'm doing here? Yeah. And hit second enter, second enter. Now hit enter, and it's, neg it's negative 1.5. Yeah. And if I store... Was it 24? Yeah. Second, enter, second, enter. There we go. Yeah. Okay. So your answers should actually have been, this should have been um, negative 6.86. This one is negative 1.5. And this one was, and that those make sense now because it's getting faster the further it gets, you know, the further it gets down the wall. Yeah. Negative 0.58. Okay. Okay. Okay, so do you want me to just help uh, you set this one? Sorry, you I me to just help? Know. <laughs> you got to run. All right, well, I'll tell you what. I'll set this up for you on here. Okay. I'll just do. I'll just do it. I'll just do the problem on here for you, so you can see okay. how I've done it, and then okay. you can come back and take a look at it. Sound good? Yeah. Just send me the link to the live, and just end the live like after this problem. That probably will work. Yeah, that's that. That'll work. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to probably ask you for the link in like 30 minutes or so. Okay. Well, you can also just look at it on here. If that, yeah. for whatever reason that link didn't work, you can just look at, look at the page and you'll probably be able to figure out what I did. Yeah. And I'm going to try to go back to that first problem too, that we were stumped on to figure out why. Okay. How to do that so one. As well. Sorry if these problems were hard. There. Oh, no, 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 no. It's, you know what? It's good. I'm glad it was just you today though. This would have been a little bit tough for me to do with other people around. So yeah. Yeah. All right, bud. Have All a right. good one. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Yeah. No problem. You too. All right. The conical vertical tank with vertex down. So this is that. Is six feet across on the top. So this is three feet. The radius is three feet. Six feet across on the top and 12 feet deep. So that's 12. So we're going to have a triangle. We're going to have a um, similar triangle, and we're going to talk about water level, and these are similar triangles, and it's three feet by 12 feet. And so we're going to have a, a, um, a radius. Uh, the changing radius is going to be related to the changing height right here. So the ratio of basically the radius to the height is one four. That's an important thing to understand. We're going to need to use that later. The water is flowing out of the tank. So water is flowing out of the tank at a rate of eight cubic feet per minute. If water is flowing out of the tank at a rate of eight cubic feet per minute. So the change in the volume, basically, the change in the volume with respect to time is eight is negative, I'm sorry, it's flowing out. So it's negative eight feet cubed per minute. Got that? Find the rate of change of the depth of the water. So they want us to find dH dt when the water is five feet deep, when H equals five. So this is a classic one of those problems. So first we have to find the volume of a cone, the volume of a cone. So let's look that up real quick. 
Oh, I bet it's right on this page somewhere because this is a very common problem. Yep. The volume of a comb is pi thirds r squared h. Pi thirds pi over three r squared h is the volume of a cone. pi over three r squared h is the formula for the volume of a cone. So dh, or taking the derivative of this with respect to time, dv dt equals, um, well, let's also first use this formula to rewrite this in terms of r. So um, h equals, if I flip each one of them, um, h over r equals four. So h equals four r. Got it? So I'm gonna substitute for R for H here. That's an important thing to do. So um, this equals pi, for this example, it equals pi over three times um, four times R cubed. That's my new formula for the volume only in terms of the radius of the tank. So the derivative of this would be the derivative of this would be three r squared times four pi over three dr dt, because I have to take the derivative of the inside. And then of course the threes cancel there. So more simply put, it's just four pi r squared dr dt. Okay, now it says, if the water is flowing out at a rate of eight cubic feet per minute, find the chain, the rate of the change in the depth of the water. Oh, crud. I shouldn't have done this in terms of R. I should have done this in terms of H. It would just be simpler. So let, let me redo that. Let's solve this in terms, let's rewrite this in terms of H. So R equals H over four. So that means pi over three times R is H over four squared times H. So that just equals pi over three times 16, which is what 48, three times 16, just to be safe so I don't make a mistake. So 48 pi over 48 times H cubed. So there's, there's my formula in terms of H. I wasn't looking carefully at this problem before I did it. So pi over 48 H, the derivative of H cubed is three H squared times DH DT. Simplifying this 48 divided by three is 16. So pi over 16 H squared DH DT. Okay, there's my equation. And now we wanna find out what the rate of change is of the height when the height is five. So I'm plugging five in for H. I wanna find out what DH is, DH DT. And the, the change in volume is eight, no, sorry, negative eight. So DH DT solving this, DH DT is going to equal negative eight times 16 over pi divided by 25. Five squared is 25. So let's see, can I cancel anything out there? Not really. So the change in H, DH, DT is going to equal, um, that number negative eight times 16, negative eight, oops, clear, negative eight times 16. That's negative 128 divided by 25 pi divided by 25 pi. Make sure you put that in parentheses. It's gonna be negative 1.63, negative 1.63, and that's going to be feet, we're talking about feet per second. Got it? Let's go back and see if we can now that we've done those 
more commonly used problem. Let's see if we can figure out this one, which stumped me at the beginning, and maybe it's still going to stump me. An airplane flies at an altitude of five miles toward a point directly over an observer. The speed of the plane is 600 miles per hour. Find the rates at which the angle of elevation is changing when um, the angle is 30. So, okay. So here, here's what I think I was doing wrong with this. I was overthinking this. The speed of the airplane is 600 miles per hour. So that means dx dt is equal to 600 miles per hour. Okay. So this is the formula. Tangent of theta equals 5 over x. And we have to take the derivative with respect to time. So what's the derivative of tangent? I don't recall. Let's look it up. Derivative of tangent. Secant squared. Okay. I should know that. That wasn't too hard. Secant squared. So the derivative with respect to x with respect to time um secant squared theta um let me let me see what i can erase here to give me some extra space The derivative of tangent theta with respect to time is secant squared theta, but then I have to say d theta over dt equals, and the derivative of five, the derivative of five times times x to the negative one is negative five x to the negative two with respect to time. So negative five over x squared dx dt. Okay. So it says the speed of the plane is 600. So the speed dx dt, which we know is 600. So that's going to turn into 600. Let me find, again, space to the right. Sorry that this is a mess. So let me rewrite this. Secant squared theta d theta dt equals negative 5 over x squared dx dt. And they said, find the rate at which the angle is changing when the angle is 30 degrees. Well, when the angle is 30 degrees, then x is, we already did this math, x equals 5 root 3. So um, the secant, so I'm plugging in 30, the secant of 30 degrees the secant is one over cosine, right? And cosine of 30 is um, the x value at 30. So sorry, I've got to think back to this. The cosine of 30 is the x value. So it's root three over two. Yeah, it's root three over two. So one over root three over two, which is two over root three, but it's squared. So secant squared is going to be four thirds. Okay, so this is four thirds. And they want us to find d theta, or the rate of change of theta, equals negative five x is going to be five root three. So I'm squaring that, and dx dt, they told us is 600. So d theta dt, which is what they want us to solve for, is equal to negative 5 times 600 times, I'm multiplying by the reciprocal, so times 3 fourths. So that's on the top. And on the bottom is 5 squared 
and three and four. So that cancels and that cancels. One of those cancels. And uh, five times four is 20. And 600 divided by 20 is 30. D theta dt equals 30. That makes sense. Seems like it's way too big. Yeah, so I guess it's 30 degrees per hour. Yeah, so that that maybe that's the right answer. 30 degrees per hour. I guess that does make sense. I mean, 30 degrees per hour. It's changing at a rate of 30 degrees per hour. I don't know if you want to say negative 30 degrees per hour. Well, it should be positive because it's going to the angle of elevation is going to be bigger. So I think it's going to be a positive change, not a negative. So maybe this D, maybe this should have been a negative 600 miles per hour, but it makes more sense that it would be a, a pause that it's changing. Because as the, as the plane gets further over your head or more over your head, that angle of elevation is going to be bigger. So 30 degrees per hour, I believe is the answer. Boy, I'm sorry. That was kind of a tricky problem for me. Hopefully that made sense, Carson. And uh, hopefully that's right. But there you go. Rate of change. Those other ones should have been relatively straightforward and easy to do. Hope you enjoyed it and good luck with